Good morning, students. Um, we're going to talk today about reporters' privilege or journalists' privilege, uh, as it's also called. Um, now, I want you to think back to Bransburg v. Hayes. And in that case, we learned that you really don't have a privilege. You don't have a reporter's or journalist privilege that is any greater than any other regular person, non-reporter's privilege out there. So why am I talking about such a thing as reporter's privilege? Uh, I'm talking about it because people do refer to it. Um, and I want you to know what it would include uh, if we were to ever have a federal reporter's privilege. Uh, states have them. They really and truly, in the face of Bransburg v. Hayes, don't hold water. But it's important for you to know about it. There has been a consistent movement towards creating a federal journalist privilege, but um, I think you can see the value in what came out of Bransburg v. Hayes, and um, uh, I think you'll I think you'll understand when I <clears throat> read these things to you. You do have some privileges. Remember Justice Stewart's three-step uh, test. Don't forget that. It's really, really important. Um, I may have to get up and let the cat out. Uh, do you want to go out? Okay, not, not just yet. Okay, so if you open up Reporter's Privilege uh, PowerPoint and uh, follow along with me, we have the rights of reporters here. Um, I'm going to list them for you. There are five of them that, okay, he wants to go out. Just a minute. There you go. There you go. Sorry about that. Uh, the right not to testify in court. Well, think back to Bransburg v. Hayes. You do, unless three particular criteria are present. You, you have the right not to testify in court. You have the right not to testify before a grand jury, uh, not to hand over evidence, the right not to re reveal identities of confidential sources. Again, as long as this is not relevant to a crime and the other two criteria. And you have the right to be protected against newsroom searches. So you do have these rights, except in those situations or in those cases where you may become involved in a criminal situation. Now, of course, here we have what we have to remember about Bransburg v. Hayes, um, the facts in this case, there were three different reporters, four companion cases. Uh, Brandsburg watched people manufacture drugs. Another covered Black Panthers and agreed not to report on anything. Information was subpoenaed by grand juries. The issue, do reporters have a First Amendment privilege to refuse to reveal their confidential sources and information to a grand jury. This is, these are the arguments that journalists give, and some of you wrote in your comments in our discussion board. These are some of the things you wrote about uh, saying, yeah, we should have one of these privileges. Well, they say that if reporters reveal their sources, their sources will dry up. Protection of sources is critical to news gathering. It will create a chilling effect on the media if they cannot keep their sources confidential. Police will abuse this power, be lazy, and make the media do their work for them. Uh, responding to subpoenas is time-consuming and costly. 
and we are the watchdogs of not participants in the judicial process. And that last one, I, I just want to make this point. If you find yourself in that situation, uh, such as Brandsburg uh, being present when people were um, making marijuana, uh, the moment you realize that you're part of a criminal enterprise, you either need to very carefully extricate yourself from the situation. In other words, you need to get out of that situation without alerting these people. Remember, these people are in this business for money. And they don't want anybody to hurt their enterprise. So you have now found yourself in a criminal situation. You don't want to be part of that situation. You don't want to promise these people that you will keep uh, information about them and their identities private. You, you really don't want to get into that situation because we then get into other situations um, such as um, the fact that uh, promising confidentiality is you have now just made a contract with a criminal. You must abide by a contract or else you suffer the consequences. Any, any way this happens, um, if you're willing to, to continue to be in that situation, you have to be very careful. These are not good people. These are people who would do something to you to make sure that you don't sing about them. And that means you do not talk about them. So be very careful. Uh, if, I, if I knew that I was about to become involved with people who are committing a crime, I might want to go to the police first, okay? And find out what you can do that is legal that will not put you at risk. So back to Brandsburg v. Hayes, the ruling, according to the ruling, no, there is no First Amendment-based privilege. It started out as a 4-1-4 decision, became a 5-4 decision. The rationale <clears throat> is this. First Amendment rights of journalists are the same as those of every other person. First Amendment is an individual right, not an institutional right. And journalists don't have additional rights that regular folks don't have. No evidence that sources would dry up. That's never become an issue. Confidential sources are a problem only when a crime is involved. Legislative bodies could pass laws to protect reporters. So there could be something like a journalist's privilege covering the whole of the United States. Um, don't look for that to happen anytime soon. Um, so the Brandsburg reinterpretation was that most lower courts have reinterpreted the Supreme Court's decision in Brandsburg. The three-part test from Stewart's dissent now is the law in many jurisdictions. So um, what he came up with was clever was smart and made sense for everyone involved. There were, were four dissenters and Powell who concurred with the majority, agree the media has have some First Amendment protection in this area of law. So the lower courts count five votes for that position, a majority. This creates what is called a qualified privilege. Qualified means you have this privilege to keep your sources confidential, but, the, what, but what qualifies it 
is that if if a crime is involved, that's what qualifies the privilege. Uh, Stewart's three-part test for a qualified privilege. Please don't forget this. Um, this may come up in your journalism career. According to Stewart's dissent, to compel a reporter to testify, one must show all of these three things. The reporter has information relevant to a crime. There's no other way to get the information. There is a compelling and overriding interest in the information. If you have to memorize these, please do. Don't forget them. All right, we're going to we're going to uh, stop here, and I'll finish in the next video.